Alrighty, time for comments X. Now comment X because uh, it can come at any time of the day. It is the review of yesterday and the sort of uh, hopes for today. Uh, so it's two o'clock. It's January twenty-first, and yesterday I went uh, shopping for. Uh, uh, the circuit designer, uh, there's an electronic store down the street from me. The circuit designer allows me to uh, build and test circuits. And when you're building an LED light bulb, that's exactly what you need. So I got uh, the circuit designer and the two LEDs, two sets of LEDs. Uh, each set will make one bulb. So. Uh, I'm on my way to uh, making my first LED light bulbs. Uh, the other thing I did yesterday was I was able to successfully get a comment out to uh, one of the users on Facebook. As I uh, sort of click around Facebook, I see interesting things, and uh, if I want to comment on it, I comment on it. That's sort of uh, what I intend to do from now on, and I intend to do a video comment. What I didn't realize is that uh, let's say one comment applies for a lot of different things. Well, you can't use that one comment for a lot of other comments. You can only use the comment once. And other than that, that that's all you can use it for. So the best way I find of leaving leaving comments is not necessarily uh, under the... the uh, under the uh, comment section of the video, but rather... Uh, once I left the one, you basically go back and you, uh, uh, you start po uh, posting the video comments either as a message or uh, it, on their f where you can post a comment to the major their major wall their, their their channel there. You go back to the channel page, and you'll see there's this post comments there. You can post the video there. So that's what I typically do. Although. Uh, most pages now with the new design, you don't see the posted comments anymore. Uh, it's, it, the design is, is actually much more restrictive where you can't see what somebody else is commenting on. Uh, the openness of YouTube uh, that was there before is now gone. And this is sort of uh, what Facebook has done. Facebook has really started hiding things more, uh, making things more difficult to get at. Uh, you have to um, have a photo ID uh, in terms to verify your account. Uh, they've even gone to the point where they've exposed the author Salman Rushdie, who was on uh, Facebook as an alias. They actually exposed his account uh, and made him show a uh, full ID on there and exposed that this is who he is, that he is Salman Rushdie, opening him up to attacks from the... Uh, uh, it, it, the from the jihadists, so the Facebook really has no sense of democratic principles anymore. Uh, if you look I mean, even on their uh, the if you open up a, a a page on Facebook page, and you go into the uh, the edit section of the page, they'll even include country restrictions. So let's say uh, China doesn't want this. Uh, this this document this document or page being seen in China, you can restrict it from going into China. You can restrict it, the the information that you're putting out to basically uh, uh, anyone you want to. You so, so it's no longer the the open uh, uh, sharing um, of ideas that Facebook started as. It's now something more corporate. It's some now something more uh, fascistly oriented. Uh, along with YouTube, YouTube is becoming more fascist in its in in many of its senses, in many of, in many senses. And it, the ironic thing is, is that the ones who uh, don't get censored are along the lines of uh, the amazing atheists who are allowed to sort of more say uh, their opinion outright because it's okay to say things against Christians. Uh, this is the same thing with that girl, Jessica. She can do what she wants to do because she uh, uh, the, the she took action against the Christian thing. 
But let's say it was something that was Muslim or something that was Jewish. Replace the term uh, Christian with Jew and go back and watch uh, The Amazing Atheist. And every time you hear him talk about Christ a Christian, replace the word with Muslim or replace the word with Jew and then ask yourself whether or not on YouTube or wherever he posts his stuff, he would be censored. He, you know, the people would flag this as inappropriate. You know, he'd get the flag. You know, you go down to the page. You, you look uh, on every uh, video page. You'll see a flag that says "flag is inappropriate report." Right? And people have done this. You know, if you have a song that's up to this copywritten, if someone comes across and says, "Ah, you've got a copyright," or something, they'll click on it, and that song. Uh, will be removed from your video, even if you've done a video montage where you've sort of done your own little thing to it. If that song is a copywritten song and somebody flags it, that song is now removed from your video and so all you hear is, all you, all you see on your video because you don't hear anything. They've muted out the soundtrack and all you see is the video without the music. So this is the extent that without SOPA, without Protect IP, YouTube and even Facebook has gone, they've really gone down this sort of corporate fascist route. Uh, the question is whether or not here that I'm saying is that, that whether or not uh, the amazing atheist really understands that atheism is, is, actually, uh, is actually a religion. And even science now has become a religion. Religion is simply a system of belief. Theology is the study of God. Well, religion is the actual mechanisms of belief. It's what you do on a regular basis in your belief. So theology defines the belief, and religion is the practice of that belief. So let's say you are a, a, me, a, a sports fan, even though let's say you call yourself a Christian, but you spend most of your times on Sundays watching the football game or whatever game is on, and you're more you pay more attention to the sports and having your, your, doing your regular sports things on a regular basis than you do going to church. Well, that means your religion is not Christianity. Your religion is whatever that sport is or sports itself. So this is the actual definition of religion. So anything that someone believes in and then starts to practice becomes that religion. So for the atheist, they were for the amazing atheist, or even all atheists. They say that in this, the argument of, of, of God doesn't exist came out in the 1800s. They've been waiting for proof since then, and they've gone over and over and over again to try to prove this, quote unquote, scientifically, even to the point where science itself has actually changed. Science was once logical, but now it's no longer logical because of, the quant because of quantum physics. Quantum physics is an, is the anti-logical science that it is of today. It says that lo, uh, that that rather than having a absolute logical universe, what you have is you have a probabilistic universe where things occur on a, pro, a level of probability. Heisenberg comes along and says, yes, this is even further true because no matter what you measure, no matter how you measure it, there's always certain, some degree of uncertainty, and they found this. In many cases, when Boeing developed the Dreamliner, it tried to develop and design everything within the computer system. It had assumed that it had, had encountered and dealt with all the possible problems that could have gone wrong and that they had eliminated the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. What happened? When they finished and they had the plane built, and even as they were building the planes, they realized that uh, they hadn't covered everything. And they had to go back to the old modeling systems where you build a mock-up and you test it. Uh, and they had to go back to the uh, wind, uh, wind tunnel testing. They had to go back to all of the old methods in addition to the computers because the model, the computer model, had uncertainties in it. And this is the same thing with the, with, with the Hadron Collider, the Super Hadron Collider. They're looking for the Higgs boson. But even if they find the Higgs boson for, for, for the Big Bang Theory, they still have a fundamental problem. The basics in elementary of physics, which is from Newton, says that for every force there is an equal and opposite re reaction. You know, you, you, you push on something, something's pushing back. 
This is this is this is Newton's law that you have to have a balance of things. This is this comes out in the uh, law of conservation of energy. This comes out the law in the law of conservation of mass. Right. This is simple and basic physics. The problem is if you have the Higgs boson, you now have to ask the question: What created or who created or how was the Higgs boson created? Because once you have a particle there. You can't simply have that particle appear out of nowhere. And this is the same thing with anything that, that, that occurs in, in life today. If you look around and you, you, you talk about, um, let's say, Richard Dawkins is one of the uh, top-level atheists. Now, he's the one that goes around talking. He's, he's an evolutionary biologist. He's got a serious problem, though, because his thoughts on atheism and on evolution violate um, the... Um, Newton's, Newton's law and it violates the conservation of mass and conservation of energy because they atheists say that the universe is random and everything is an accident oh, okay let's take that argument to this fullest to, in, in the proper physics terms well if the if the universe is random and this was an accident everything was an accident and it is still an accident because it's all random then, without violating the conservation of energy, the conservation of motion, without violating Newton's um, uh, laws of motion, then here's the problem. Where does order come from? The order that we see, when we see an, an, a supernova go up, it goes off in the order of the periodic, uh, of the periodic table. Hydrogen, helium, it, it goes up that ladder. Even the temperatures in, uh, of the different size and cores of stars follows this periodic table pa pattern. Look at, look at the periodic ta ta table of elements. It's organized. And it can be organized. This is what Mendeleev found. This is what chemists, and if you've got the cell phone or any of these, the, these modern devices, this is all based on chemistry, there's an order to it. Even when you look at things that are, are supposedly disordered, you know, that appear, and this is what was the bizarre thing that was found, that, well, how can you have infinite space within bound space? Right? You, oh, that's not possible. Right? Because it's not logical. Well, all you have to do to sort of say, well, this is simply an analogy. And no, it's not an analogy. Go look at fractals. Right? This is mathematics. The mathematics of fractals. Right? Fractal geometry. Then you have here, you have repeating series of cycles and infinite space within, within a bound space. So what happens is that, yes, you do have chaos in the universe, but there's an enormous amount of order in the universe that can't be explained by simply saying the universe is random. So this is where science is today, or it's supposed to be. But science hasn't gone down that road, because why? Science needs to have its tenure, it needs to have its experts, it needs to have its gurus, it needs to have its priests, it needs to have its saints, and it needs to have, the, it needs to have its illuminaries. Right? You go on to uh, watch uh, Jay Leno show, or any other, and every once in a while you'll see this amazing scientist come up there and, and show you his magic tricks. You'll hear people saying about, oh, this is scientific and that's scientific. And then they'll say, do you, do you believe in science? Do you believe in global warming? And it's about belief. It's not about scientific uh, reality. And that's religion. That's not science. It's religion. And of course, the thing is, is that when you go to the science that is proper today, where we are simply the observer, we're no longer the master of the domain. Most people don't like that because they have to remove their position as, uh, as, a, as an authority. There is no longer any authority in science, in the, in, in the, the proper and new science. The, 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 this is the proper science, what's it, what supposed to be science. There is no authority. And so what happens is the whole argument of atheism being founded on the scientific principle is gone. It, it was gone in 1945 with the atomic bomb. When we went from the classical Newton world 
in 1945 to the world of quantum physics with the, with, with the explosion of the atomic bomb, we left behind the arguments of modern science, which was at that time uh, the foundation of the whole atheist movement. The atheist movement is based on modern science, but the modern science ended, right, the, what they call quote-unquote modern science, ended in 1945 with the atomic bomb. Since 1945, we've been in quantum physics and quantum mechanics. Now we've gone beyond quantum mechanics, uh, and they were already trying to go beyond quantum because they've never really been able to do it. Uh, they're been proposing this whole new idea of uh, super strings. But super strings right now, in, even in its best form, still remains hypothetical. They haven't been able to push the barriers forward beyond quantum physics. So, what the amazing atheist has to realize is that he can't abolish religion because religion is whatever, whatever you practice is, is what you believe. And atheism is as much a religion as is Christianity. So, I will go into this a little bit further in detail uh, because I am a geek. The, the, and the, this does have an enormous amount of detail that, that could, could be gotten into. So if this is not a subject that is short. So we will be revisiting this. Uh, and you will find me at particular points in time a lot like Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> yes, yes, I have uh, my, I live in my library. I live in my labs. And I'm studying all the time, and I will part, you know, uh, share with you all the wisdom that is here. I will show you things that you may have not realized, things that you have never seen before. And this will put the amazing atheist argument in perspective, and, you know, you can decide for yourself. All right, I have to go food shopping again. <laughs>